Hello there and welcome to my SQL screencast series. This session we'll talk about the information schema and how you can use the information schema in the SQL database to view the metadata, the table design, the columns, the keys, the constraints, all that good stuff. One of the really cool things about SQL in general is that it practices what it preaches, that is it uses tables for metadata but it also uses tables to store the metadata as data believe it or not so in, in, in essence when you're creating a table you're actually inserting a row in a special system table um, that stores data about that metadata it's it's kinda complicated but if you bear with me I think you'll see what I'm talking about so I've written an SQL statement that actually pulls from a special table called the information schema dot tables collection when you execute this statement you get a list of all the tables uh, on your system and in the in a previous screen gas we we dealt with the products table so I'm gonna use the where clause to filter this by um, table name like product match. So it says where table name um, is like product and then something. So this will get me product and product types. So there's my two tables, product and product types. This is a this is the way that you would find out what tables are in a database is you would use this information schema table. So if you want to find out about the columns, um, you use information schema columns. you get an output that for each of the table, remember the product types table has one column and it's bar car 20 and the products table has four columns um, it has an int bar car decimal and um, bar car again and bar car 20 bar car 50 and then it's um, decimal uh, 12 2 so you can see that um, the information schema columns output gives you some information not only about the table but the columns in the table. All right, so you want to know something about the constraints. Let's do information schema table constraints and execute that. And you'll see, no, now, you, now it makes sense why you name these constraints the way I do. Is so that you use the pro, this is a primary key on product type. It also tells you that over here. Uh, this is a primary key on product ID in the in the uh, products table. There it is. And then we have the unique constraint on product name, the uh, check constraint, and the foreign key constraint on Okay, so let's suppose you want to um, see what this check constraint is. Well, um, you pull that from information schema check constraints. And let's be a little more specific. Let's say um, where table name is product products, because we know that the check constraint is in that specific table. I'm going to execute that. mistake the in in the information schema in the information let me just copy and paste this for a second in the information schema check constraints there is no table name so you have to know the constraint name see the constraint name here, it's CK product cost. So the first query will show me this output that I see here, the second query will show me just that constraint. So I'm just going to highlight this one here and run it. So there it is, and you can see uh, product cost greater than or equal to zero. There it is. It's interesting because this is data, 
if I really want to change this constraint, I can just do a, an SQL update statement on this particular row and edit the check clause. I don't advise that as a means of uh, designing your tables. Uh, obviously, you want to use the SQL uh, um, data definition language to do that, but you very well could manipulate the information schema to do that. Back and execute the table constraints. You remember there's a foreign key um, down here. If you want to see the details of the foreign key, then you're going to need to use the referential constraints. Where constraint name is do this first I can see that I have a foreign key FK product type if I run this then I can see the details of that particular foreign key including um, what primary key it's associated with and um, any update rules uh, referential integrity has you can do a cascade update or a cascade delete which says if I manipulate the value of the primary key what should I do in the foreign key should I update it or not so right now it's set to no action and that explains some basics of how to use the information schema to view the metadata, the tables, the columns, the keys, and the constraints uh, in your database design from the SQL query window. Thank you very much, and look forward to the next webcast.